Okay, we are live. Good evening, everyone. My name is Rick Sodebeer with Love for a Lifetime. I'm an author, speaker, blogger, and dating coach, and I'm the co-author of the book Dating Backward, and that's available on Amazon.com. The premise of the book is that we all make mistakes dating, and typically uh, we start dating backwards. We go out and, and uh uh, look for a relationship uh, without knowing exactly what we want. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about tonight is uh, finding that right relationship. And what are the things that we need to, uh, to be looking for in, in, in that right relationship? Uh, currently, uh, what, what I teach my students is that there are four cornerstones to an extraordinary relationship. There is an intellectual connection, a spiritual connection, a, uh, an emotional connection, and a physical connection. Uh, we all get the, the physical connection, or at least part of it. Uh, we all want to be attracted to our mate. We want to have that physical, that physical uh, attraction. But there's also the physical intimacy. Uh, physical intimacy is something that I highly recommend that, that you wait on uh, until after you've had a chance to develop uh, the intellectual, spiritual, and emotional connections. Uh, the emotional connection is is another two part uh, another two part connection. The emotional connection uh, for most of us, or what most of us might think of, is going to be the love that permeates the relationship. That it's kind of the glue that holds all all of it together. But on another level, there is the emotional maturity, the the emotional security uh, of a relationship. Uh, I can't tell you the number of of people that I've talked to in relationships that that uh, were with somebody that was emotionally immature and and uh, uh, for any number of reasons, uh, it 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 obviously destroys the relationship. The third, the uh, the third cornerstone is the intellectual connection, and this is the connection that you you will share basically the same values and morals, financially, socially, emotionally, uh, or uh, 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 politically. Uh, these are the things that that you're going to sh to share in common. Uh, and it's important to to have these to have a strong intellectual connection that uh, that you can lean on each other in tough times and 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 hold each other up in in tough times. Uh, and then in the good times, uh, you have great conversations and and uh, these are the 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 intellectual connection is one that that really. Uh, if you've ever experienced a conversation where where you just lose complete track of time, that's part of the intellectual connection. Now, the third, there, the fourth key cornerstone to a great relationship is going to be the the uh, the spiritual connection. This connection, I believe, is is very important. Studies have shown us that that the the uh, the more equally yoked you are, so to speak, uh, the stronger the relationship will be. When you, when you, and, and it doesn't make any difference whether you believe in God or whether you don't believe in God. If you do, make sure that you're with somebody that does believe in God. If you don't believe in God, if you're atheist or agnostic or or uh, you know whatever whatever else. Uh, uh, be with somebody that's 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 of 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 common belief. Uh, again, just being equally yoked. One of the things that I've noticed in in really great relationships and and um, and, and it is is the ability to communicate in the relationship, and it goes back to the intellectual connection. Uh, you have to be able to talk about anything and everything in in your relationship. Um, thanks, Coach Martin. I appreciate that comment. Uh, and if anybody has any questions out there as we go, please feel free to jump in and and shoot me a question. I'll be I'll be uh, happy to answer any questions along the way for you. Um, the uh, again, great communication is is important. I had a 
conversation this weekend with a young couple that, that, that had just met back in December. And it was a cute story, an interesting story about, um, about how they met and the relationship that they're developing. And it's kind of opened my eyes to long distance relationships. Um, I've never been a big fan of them, but with the right relationship, they can work. Uh, the young man has, has, uh, season tickets to the Kansas City Chiefs football team here in, in Kansas City. And uh, right be, right in front of his seats uh, is an older couple. And one day at one of the games, the, uh, the, 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 the lady turned around and said, you know, you'd be great for my daughter. And apparently she recognized some things in this young man that, that uh, she thought would be ideal for her daughter. Well, to make a long story short, they, they, they connected. He went out to, to uh, Tennessee to meet her. And they struck up a, uh, they've struck up quite a connection. Their first date was, was only a couple of days. Uh, and when you think about it, most first dates are only a couple of hours. But they connected so so deeply and so strongly, so quickly, that they uh, they quickly started commuting back and forth, uh, probably once a month. But they talk every day, and uh, their their second date was a five day date. They were just together this weekend for Valentine's Day, and they had a great evening. Uh, and so, uh, they in in my conversation with them and explaining the four cornerstones. Um, in explaining the four cornerstones uh, and the intellectual connection, uh, they really had connected and had some very deep conversations about money, about sex, about religion, about politics, um, about kids already. And so those are, those are some really key questions about uh or key conversations to have in a great relationship. The, um, the, 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 more, the more things you have in common, the stronger your relationship is going to be. Uh, I've seen studies that, that have, have said, yes, uh, opposites attract. And there is some truth to that. But those same studies also show that those those relationships typically end within about five years. So they're not the, uh, they're, they're exactly coach. Thanks. Important. These are important, um, conversations to have on the front end, not something you have after you're married and, uh, looking for, you know, trying to figure each other out. It's, it's good to spend that time, it's it's good to spend that time talking up front, and um, so anyway, I appreciate I appreciate your comments. Keep uh, keep it coming. Uh, so anyway, uh, you know, one of the other aspects of great relationships is, uh, in my opinion, is to speak similar love languages. Uh, I've found that that tends to allow us to communicate much more deeply. Uh, because we're not struggling to figure out what the other person's what the other person needs, uh, it's it, while I know we can all learn the the uh, the love languages of others, uh, it's it's so much easier to try to or to to build a relationship with somebody that you you already speak a common love language with. Uh, for example, mine is physical touch and acts of service. Now, if I can so find somebody that, that uh, is acts of service and physical touch, that's great. Um, uh, oftentimes, uh, women will be uh, quality time. So, but if they're, they're one of their others is physical touch or, or, uh, 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 acts of service, then, then we can still have a good relationship. Uh, so, you know, if, whether your love language is gifts or, 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 uh, quality time or words of affirmation, I believe it's important to find somebody that has similar, similar, uh, 
similar love languages again because it makes it makes the communication so much easier um, last night I had a workshop with with several people and we went through one of the exercises uh, and one of those exercises is determining what are your must-haves in the relationship uh, I get I get pushback on this from time to time uh, because a lot of people say, well, you know, if you if you define your relationship that closely, um, you 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 prevent serendipity or, you know, the, what about you know, what about the people that you're pushing away? They may be great people um, and that could very well be. But if they don't have everything that you want in an extraordinary relationship then what's the point of being there? What's the point of having that relationship? Uh, and the must-haves are going to be those things that are absolutely non-negotiable, things that, that you want in a relationship that, uh, and they could be simple things. They don't have to be big things. They can be somebody that, would, that's, that likes to hold hands. It could be somebody that uh, will help you clean the house. It could be somebody of similar politics. Uh, you know, whatever it is, it could be a, a good family man or a good, uh, you know, uh, uh, somebody that loves children. Uh, so the there's any number of things that, that, that you can put on your list. And I always encourage my clients to, to put the list in positive terms. Think about those things. And what I've found, and there's some scientific backing to this, that when you think of, of things in terms positively, that's what you're going to attract. When you think of things in terms negatively, that's what you're going to attract. Uh, I've met several people that have told me when we go through this, through this exercise that uh, they have dated so many people that were not right for them because they were focusing on the things they didn't want in the relationship. And when you focus on those things that, that, uh, that you don't want in the relationship, those are the tend to, tend to be the things that you look for and find. So uh, one of the things that, that, that uh, I've learned over time is that if you're focusing on the negative, um, uh, it takes extra energy to to convert that to positive. So uh, again, I write everything down in the positive. Now I do have a deal breakers list. Uh, it's a very short list, but there are certain things that are deal breakers, and and I think virtually everybody would have deal breakers also. Uh, there are certain things that none of us will put up with, uh, and you know typically when I talk. To, when I talk to people or we go through this exercise in a workshop, they'll tell me things like no smoking, no alcohol, no drugs, uh, no pornography, and it may be other things like uh, it could could involve pets or, or uh, you know, just other personal preferences. Uh, so those things are typically going to be, uh, you know, the, 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 uh, Deal breaker list is typically going to be very short. Um, then the the third step there to that process is, what kind of person does it take to find the person that you're looking for? Do you have all the characteristics necessary to to uh, to to find the person that you're looking for to 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 qualify to to uh, for the person that you're looking for. If there are things that you need to work on, then this is a good time to start working on them. If you want somebody that's, that's um, very physically fit, you can't be 300 pounds and sitting on the couch and expect, expect uh, to find that kind of a person, that kind of a mate. Uh, if you want somebody that likes to cook, uh, you might want to, be able to at least wash the dishes and 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 help around the kitchen. If you're if you're not able to do that, then uh, it could be a problem. Not always, but it could be. Uh, so there's any number of things that 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 you can look for when when uh, just taking an introspective look at what you can do to be 
the best possible mate for for uh, the person you're looking for. Any questions so far? I see we've got people jumping in and out, and and Coach uh, Coach Martin has jumped in and out here a couple of times, and and uh, so if if you again if you have any questions, feel free to uh, uh, drop me a note, and and Phil, if you've got questions, I you've been you've been hanging in there pretty consistently, so I appreciate that. Um, one of the things that 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 always comes up, I, I always challenge my my students, is when you've made your must-have list, and you let's say you have twenty items on that list, and she or he meets nineteen of the twenty, what do you do? What do you do? And consistently, people will tell me, well, if it's that close, I would probably settle for 19 out of 20. And the key word there is being settle. Uh, I can't tell you the number of conversations that, I, that I've had that have gone this way. And the one thing that, that's absolutely critical here to recognize is that when you settle, you're subliminally or internally telling yourself you're not good enough to have everything on your list. And I say, bull, uh, you can have everything on your list. Uh, we're told by society that if we want, you know, that, that we're too picky, we're too choosy, uh, Nobody can fill fulfill the the everything on your list, and I say BS uh, on that. And the reason being, if we look at at the numbers, and I'll use Kansas City, the Kansas City metro area as an example. There's over eight hundred thousand singles in the Kansas City metropolitan area, and that's over age thirty five. Now, if we if we look at that a little closer, and let's just assume that just one half of 1% of that 800,000 meets our criteria on our must-have list, then we cut that number in half because about half are men and half are women uh, uh, based on, on the most recent census information. That leaves approximately 2,000 people, men or women, to date in the Kansas City area. And one of the things that I hear about Kansas City is it's such a terrible place to date. Really? Well, you have a you have a, a large single population here. You have a lot of great things to do. So the my point of this is that don't let your your list uh, or people tell you that your list is is too long. You're too picky. Uh, you'll never find the right person uh, because there there are people out there, and you just have to know where to look. And that is actually more critical than than most anything else you do. You have to be proactive in looking for your right relationship. Uh, you know, finding the right relationship. Uh, it does take effort. It's not something that you can wave a magic wand and say, "Poof, there they are." You can't sit at home on the couch, you know, thinking that the that God's going to bring you to, or your fairy princess, or whatever you want to believe is going to bring your mate to you, uh, unless you believe that it's going to be the mailman or the UPS guy, uh, or maybe a plumber. I don't know. Uh, but anytime, anytime you you are not being proactive in looking for your relationship, uh, you're you're taking yourself out of the game. And there are plenty of places to look. Uh, you know, it's still one of the one of the statistically the greatest the the, the places with the most highest or the with the highest odds of finding somebody are the workplace and family and friends, where family and friends introduced you. And that goes back to the story I told a little bit earlier about the about the young couple I met this weekend. Uh, it, they were, there was an introduction from, from her mother. So um, 
Any questions so far? I see a bunch of people have jumped in, and and uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I'd be happy to to answer your questions along the way. Anything you have regarding uh, regarding uh, finding the right relationship? Uh, we've talked a lot about uh, some of the key characteristics, uh, having the four cornerstones, uh, which are the, the foundation of any great relationship, which are an intellectual, spiritual, emotional, and physical connection. Uh, we've talked about we've talked about uh, speaking the same love languages. We've talked about having our our uh, our must-have list, our deal-breaker list, and then what do we bring to the table uh, for uh, for that extraordinary relationship? Now, one of the things that that I do want to bring in here as a caveat is that e even in the most extraordinary relationships, the ones that that you know, that, and, and these are the types of relationships we all want—the kind that give us butterflies when when we're coming home, the, the, the kind that give us the tingle in the toes, you know, that great kiss, that, that voice in the middle of the day, when we get a phone call from our, our, our significant other, you know, just to say, just how is your day? And it doesn't make any difference how, how crummy a day you've got that voice coming, coming across the phone lines is just going to melt you. And it's just, Oh, now everything's right with the world. That's the type of relationship that, that that most of us should be looking for. Not a mediocre or even a good relationship, but we want an extraordinary relationship. Um, and to to my point, even the extraordinary relationships are going to have rough times. Life happens, and you know somebody's going to lose a job somebody's going to a parent or or a friend is going to pass away um there's any number of things uh sickness disease um accidents all these things can happen but in an extraordinary relationship uh you're going to be there to support each other it's not about it's not about me it's not about you it's about us in those extraordinary relationships uh, there is a, there is a, well, let's just call it what it is, an unconditional love. Uh, you each give 100% to the other without, without any expectation in return. And that is one of the most amazing feelings I've ever felt. I've, I, I never had that even as a child. Uh, and it was, it was wonderful to meet a woman that, that, uh, that offered that unconditional love to me, and uh, it was it was great to be able to communicate with her. And it was where I learned about extraordinary communication, about being able to talk about anything and everything. And these conversations are not always easy. They're not always um, they're not always pleasant because there are tough things that need to be that need to be discussed. Uh, you know, it, it could be any number of, of things from from habits, personal habits to to uh, to politics to to family family issues. But when you can talk about these things uh, in a loving way and, and, and in a safe environment, and that that brings up another topic of, of being able to have good conversations. Um, and and not be afraid of of repercussions from something that you say. Uh, we have to provide our mate a safe environment and assure them that that what they tell us is is not going to be used against them at some later time. Um, Again, I'll take questions. We're going to be here for about another five or six minutes. If anybody has any questions, uh, we've covered a lot of a lot of uh, topics on on uh, finding a, gr a great relationship. Uh, but the key is to understand what what that relationship looks like to you. My relationship is going to be one. The relationship I look for is going to be different than than the relationship that Phil looks for or any, any, anybody else that's jumped in and out here. Uh, we all have our own 
past experiences. We all have our own personal preferences um, and typically based on those experiences. When I have conversations with people in my in my group sessions, um, people are often amazed when I tell them the number of, of must-haves I have. But I finally had in, in, in a group last night, uh, I had a woman said that say that she had 40 items on her list. And I gave her a high five because that's about what I have on mine. And, and all too many times, oh, you can never find somebody like that. You can number, never find somebody that will fulfill all those uh, must-haves. Well, I've met two women that have already uh, met those criteria, but there were other issues that, that uh, prevented those relationships from taking off. So I know from experience that regardless of how many must-haves you have, there's somebody out there that will fulfill those. You just you just have to understand that the longer your list, the little longer it's going to take to find that right person. But you have to be proactive in 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 go in making that search and it's critical to have the must-haves deal breakers and in what you bring to the table uh understood up front because you can waste a lot of time in in dating and trying to find the right relationship if you don't know what you're looking for uh, it's just like any other goal if your goal is to find a long-term relationship, that woman or that man of your dreams, you have to be able to know, you have to be able to identify that person. Uh, I've had a, a number of people tell me, well, uh, they don't know what they're looking for, but they'll know when they find it. Really? Uh, how are you going to know if you, if, you, if, you ha if you don't have clarity? A re long-term relationship is no different it's no different than setting any other goal uh if you wanted to to uh purchase a home uh, a car you know anything any goal you set a financial goal you know what you have to do you know what your what your what your criteria are for for whatever it is you're you're trying to accomplish the same thing should happen in a relationship or in looking for that relationship. I know this sounds really sterile and really cold, but the reality is the more things you have in common, the less things you're going to have to argue about. You know, argue about the, the tube of toothpaste, you know, who is squeezing from the middle or squeezing from the bottom or, or uh, argue about the little things like, like uh, which way the, the roll of toilet paper goes. I mean, those are things that, those are little things that, that you can get around, but the bigger things, you need to have a lot of stuff in common. They need, and, and again, the more things you have in common, the less things you have to butt heads about and, and the less things that are going to, the less you're going to have things that are going to distract you from, 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 uh, uh, from deep intellectual conversations and, uh, or even silly nonsensical conversations. You have, and again, you have to be able to talk about anything and everything. So anyway, I appreciate everybody that's jumped in and and uh, stuck around. Phil, you've hung it out, hung hung in there for the entire uh, almost thirty minutes now. I appreciate you. Anybody else that has questions, if you'd like to shoot me a question, I'd be more than happy to answer uh, what I can for you. We'll be on for about another minute and a half or two minutes, and uh, uh, we'll go from there. Uh, if, if we don't have any questions, I'll fill a little bit of time here. Again, my name is Rick Sodebeer. I am a dating coach, a speaker, an author, and a blogger. Uh, you can go to my website and check out events. I'm in the Kansas City area, and if you're you're in the Kansas City area, we can do one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, if you're outside of the area, uh, I've just implemented some some e-coaching, and that's available. That we can we can do one-on-one uh, uh, -on -one sessions like this, and we're in the process of, of also setting up group sessions. <clears throat> excuse me, where we can, where we can, uh, do, we, we can uh, have a group of up to 10, and that's what we're going to limit it to. The system allows us a lot more, but we'll be able to have up to 10 people in the group, and uh, some of the group dynamics are, are, are just phenomenal.
Um, and those will all be about dating and relationships and helping you work through your, your relationship and dating issues. Uh, you can go to my website. It's loveforalifetime.com. And that's L-U-V, the number four, a lifetime.com. <laughs> Excuse me here. I'm I'm running out of juice. So anyway, we're at the um we're at the half bottom of the hour, 7 30. I appreciate you all for checking in and, and uh, sticking with me. Uh join me next week um <clears throat> at seven o'clock on Wednesday for a new topic. And if you look, we already have that one scheduled. We have um a wonderful woman. Uh, Latrice that's going to be with us and uh, and uh, we're, we're going to have a good conversation <clears throat> thanks Phil I appreciate you checking in and the vote of confidence here <laughs> I figured that's what you meant so you all have a great evening and we'll uh, we'll see you all next week thanks <laughs>